，真的那么错。你人民总体的话，在做低速起步，把上次的一，这两次，天天去。你说看点西边，骑脚满足一点点，从三八啦，拖起来能修机，天天给他开，修这么大。产证明，一天起，车站你是做西藏大事。Keep up to date with all the latest news, views, and exciting developments affecting this extraordinary place. Explore the vibrant Tibetan culture, its music, its literature, the lives of its people. I'm Mr. Jen. This is our daily 60-minute English program. I'm Mr. Lee in Hong Kong. Hello, and welcome to our English program, Hong Kong Express. Hello, Mr. Lee. Delve into its fascinating history. Hear its age-old voice. Feel the pulse of this amazing place. This is Holy Tibet. Hello and welcome to this edition of Tibet Review, brought to you by China Tibet Radio and Television. I'm Xiao Yue. Like any Tap exploration of businesses, lifestyles, sports, and entertainment here in Tibet. Tibet Review brings you pleasure to the dynamic life on the world's highest level. Join us across this fascinating wonderland. Join us every Saturday afternoon. This is Holy Tibet. Today, President Xi calls for enhanced China-Arab BRI cooperation to boost development at advanced times. She will report that on August 19th, Chinese President Xi Jinping said China is ready to work with Arab states to jointly build the Belt and Road with high-quality and advanced China-Arab strategic partnership to a higher level. President Xi made the remarks in a congratulatory letter to the Fox China Arab States Expo, which opened on August 19th in Inchuan, the capital of Ningxia Hui Autonomous Region in northwest China. More than 1,000 domestic and overseas enterprises have registered as exhibitors in online and virtual events. As one of the Expo's major events, the Belt and Road Investment Promotion Conference held on that afternoon witnessed the signing of 13 cooperation projects under the Belt and Road Initiative involving a total of 4 billion yuan or about 617 million US dollars. President Xi said in the letter that China and Arab states have in recent years continued to strengthen strategic coordination and synergy of actions, and the joint construction of the Belt and Road has achieved a fruitful result. Bound by the history of the ancient Silk Road, China and Arab states are natural partners for BRI cooperation and have notable complementarity. So far, China has signed BRI cooperation documents with 19 Arab countries in the Arab League. The initiative serves as an opportunity to achieve the common development of participating countries that advance China-Arab strategic partnership, as noted in the Declaration of Action on China-Arab BRI cooperation in 2018. President Xi said that China remains the largest trading partner of Arab countries. In 2020, the total trade volume between China and Arab states was nearly 240 billion US dollars. Arab states' imports from China reached over 120 billion US dollars, up 2.1% year on year despite the impact of the pandemic. That is proof of the great resilience, potential, and concrete achievements of China-Arab cooperation. President Xi also said that in the face of COVID-19, China and Arab countries have joined hands to fight the pandemic, setting an example of helping each other and overcoming difficulties together. China and Arab states have shown great sincerity in jointly countering pandemic challenges. Saudi Arabia's King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud was among the first foreign heads of state to hold a phone call with President Xi voicing support for China's COVID-19 response back in 2020. In China and the United Arab Emirates, Chinese conducted the world's first international phase three clinical trials of inactivated COVID-19 vaccines. 
So far, China has donated and exported more than 72 million doses of vaccines to 17 Arab states in the Arab League. So Xiaofei, a researcher in the China Institute of International Studies, said the construction of the BRI in the economic and health sectors, among others, has been gaining momentum during the pandemic, which demonstrates progress towards the construction of a China Arab state community with a shared future oriented to the new era. Jai Jun, China's special envoy on NATO East Affairs, in the opening of the Expo said, China will now work to meet the need of COVID-19 vaccines in Arab countries as well as Arab states to further cooperate on the local production of vaccines. He said, we will build on the BRI cooperation momentum to further synergize development strategies as help realize the dreams of national rejuvenation for both sides. President Xi noted in the letter that China is ready to work with Arab states to seek cooperation and development, promote peaceful development, achieve mutual benefits and win-win results, jointly build the Belt and Road with high quality. The Expo features exhibition areas with themes including the digital economy, clean energy and cross-border e-commerce. Dean Law, a professor in the Middle East Studies Institute at the Shanghai International Studies University, said these arrangements stand as barometers of the continuous upgrading of the BRI in the post-pandemic era, indicating new growth areas in technology-empowered sections, not including infrastructure and production capacity cooperation, as well as new cooperation dividends for both sides. Moroccan Prime Minister Saad Adin and Osmani said by video that Arab countries in China are highly complementary in the economy and enjoy broad prospects for cooperation. He noted that Morocco has actively participated and played a constructive role in the BRI and has seen great progress in the country's infrastructure. Kazakhstan's first deputy prime minister, Elton Smolov, said that the BRI has proven to be practical and successful, and the proposal of building a digital self road and a green self road will make contributions to the low carbon development of the world. Stressing that new opportunities will be brought to countries along the Belt and Road, Tunisian Foreign Minister Osman Jurandi said that joint efforts to safeguard regional security and stability are vital for the further development of the initiative. Gao Shangtao, director of the Center for Middle East Studies in China Foreign Affairs University, said China Arab BRI cooperation will help rally forces to build clusters and highlands of advanced economies, providing powerful engines of technology, expertise, and service so as to promote global recovery and contribute to maintaining an open world economy that benefits all. Yeah, China's top political advisor for this people in the truth, Xinhua reports that China's top political advisor Wang Yang on August 20th visiting the city of Nectru in southwest China's Tibet Autonomous region on the occasion of the celebration for the 17th anniversary of Tibet's peaceful liberation. Wang, a member of the Standing Committee of the Political Bureau of the Communist Party of China Central Committee and Chairman of the National Committee of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, led a division of the Central Delegation to conduct the visit. Wang met with members of local party leadership groups and representatives from various ethnic groups and from all walks of life. He presented a congratulatory flag, on which Xi Jinping, General Secretary of the CPC Central Committee, wrote inscriptions, building a beautiful and happy Tibet, and together fulfilling the great dream of national rejuvenation to the city.
On behalf of the CTC Central Committee with President Xi Jinping and the Corps, we will also extend warm greetings to the local people. We well recognized the tremendous changes taking place in Nepal during the past 70 years since the peaceful liberation of Tibet, calling for more efforts to fully implement the CTC proposed guidelines for governing Tibet in the new era. When visiting an ecological animal husbandry industry demonstration park, Wang commended its efforts to help local people increase incomes. He also inspected the building of primary level party organizations in a local village and paid a visit to a local family. In a school, we learned about educational systems work to Tibet and urging improving local education to foster talent. Giving credit to medical workers involved in medical systems to Tibet in a hospital of Nikchu, Wang stressed the importance to bring health and well-being to local people. During the visit, Wang was also briefed on tree planting on Plateau and announced the opening of an expressway linking Nikchu and Yambadi. New expressway began operation in Tibet. The China Daily reports that the world's highest expressway linking Kasa, capital of the Tibet Thomas region, with the region's northern city of Nikchu, began operation on August 21st. With a speed limit of 120 km per hour and sitting at an average altitude of over 4,500 meters, the 294-kilometer Nikchu Lhasa Expressway is a section of the G6 Beijing to Tibet Expressway. The new Expressway, the first between the two cities, will shorten the drive between them to three hours for more than six previous ways. Gongatsuren, a resident of New Kisir, the opening of the Expressway is great news for him because he frequently travels between the two cities. Previously, he had to use the bumpy and often jammed G109 National Highway. He said, he's been operating a very product business in Tesla for years, for which he has to transport milk and butter all the time, and the new expressway will greatly shorten the trip. The new road will help keep his dairy products fresh and unfolded while he's transporting them. Wang Yixin, construction chief of the new Trey section of the new road, said, while creating the expressway, builders took the vulnerable plateau environment into account. He said, heavy investment has been made in the project to preserve wildlife and establish pathways for livestock on the expressway. Also, alpine meadow turf was stripped and replanted, and some bridges were made with long span continuous girders to reduce the disturbance to the environment. With the opening of the expressway, the total length of the region's expressway network has reached 1,105 kilometers. Residents have praised the expanded network for business scenery in the town and saves them on the road. Unga Tsadien, another business owner in Hasasu, the operation of the new expressway is a good thing for him, as he often drove back and forth on the G109, which runs parallel to the newly opened expressway. He said, in the past, the road was always muddy and slippery when it rained or snowed. The trip took longer, so sometimes it was very frustrating. He likes driving on the new highway as he can observe wildlife wandering on the beautiful northern grasslands. With the net g section open to the public, all there is left to complete on the G6, which is about 3,700 kilometers long, is the section from net to to Gongmund, Qinghai province. According to Tibet's transport department, construction of the section may start during the 14th five year plan period from 2021 to 2025. We warmly celebrate the 100th anniversary of the founding of the Communist Party of China and the 17th anniversary of the peaceful liberation of Tibet. Scientific innovation advances to both agricultural development. Xinhua reports that local authorities have said agricultural science and technology have contributed greatly to the effective supply of agricultural products and raised the incomes of farmers and herders in southwest China's Tibet Autonomous Region. According to the Science and Technology Department of Tibet, Expanding our research and development in agriculture and animal husbandry has long accounted for more than 60% of the region's total research and development investment. 
It said the region has popularized a series of new agriculture and animal husbandry varieties, technologies, and equipment over recent decades, with more than 150 new crop varieties having been nurtured. So about fall and barley yield surged from approximately 80 kilograms per mole. The mole is about 0.067 hectares before the region's peace operation in 1951 to some 380 kilograms per mole at present. The department said high-tech innovation has also helped increase the incomes of farmers and herders. You've been listening to Tibet Review of the Holy Tibet from China Tibet Radio and Television with me, Xiaoyan. Tibetan Tanka Art Exhibition opens in Malta. Shenzhou reports that a Tibetan Tanka Art Exhibition with the theme of Chinese Tibet, Just De Lu, opened in Malta on August 20th to mark the 17th anniversary of Tibet's peaceful liberation. The exhibition, also accessible online, is jointly hosted by the China Cultural Center in Malta in the Cultural Department of the Tibet Autonomous Region. Around 20 Tanka artworks have been selected for the exhibition, covering different schools of Tanka art, such as Chiwagan School and the Ming Tang School. All these artworks are arranged in symbolism and characterized by strong composition, delicate detail, vivid expression, and dazzling colors. The testimony to the wisdom of Tibetan people and the unique charm of Tanka, traditional Buddhist artworks painted on cotton or silk. Jingyi Walton, director of the cultural department of the Tibet Autonomous Region, said, Exhibition will connect art lovers in China and Malta and promote cultural exchanges and cooperation. Yang Shaolong, director of the China Cultural Center in Malta, said, The exhibition is also the first in a series of events celebrating the upcoming Chinese Mid Autumn Festival, which will take place on September 21st. Yang said, the exhibition, which will last until October 6, features Tibetan landscapes and travel videos, which give an insight into Tibetan culture and customs, as well as the origin, evolution, and techniques in the profound culture of the Tanka art. This is Holy Tibet. Holy Tibet will take you to visit the roots of the world. Holy Tibet is the home of the life of Tibet. You are welcome to enjoy Holy Tibet. Artists record leapfrog development in Tibet. She will report that Southwest China's Tibet Autonomous Region celebrates the 17th anniversary of its peaceful liberation this year. The region has undergone decades of leapfrog development. Liang Shuxiong, a renowned Chinese painter, is the third generation of the Lingnan School of Painting. He first visited Tibet in 1965 and 32 as a painter from the Guangzhou Academy of Fine Arts. In September 1965, the first session of the First People's Congress of Tibet was convened, proclaiming the founding of the Tibet Autonomous Region. Liang went to Tibet in the same year with the delegation from the central government. Liang's stay in Tibet lasted for about five months. He created a large number of sketches, which truly reflected the joy of serfs over emancipation and the Tibetan support for the Communist Party of China. Liang first met Shijadawa the print-making artist now in Tibet. In June this year, they were reunited again, 56 years since the two parted. Shijidawa finished a print-making work this year, which shows the happy life of Tibetan families. Through the works from artists like Yang and Shijidawa, people can see the rebirth of Tibet and the great changes taking place in the lives of Tibetan people. You've been listening to Tibet Review of the Holy Tibet from China Tibet Radio and Television with me, Xiaoyue. Please to now witness improving postal road network in China's Tibet. Xinhua reports that Nilam Denbo, a motorbike courier from Taran Township of Linchi City, Southwest China's Tibet Autonomous Region, delivers mails for six villages. Taran Township is called Island on Plateau by locals as it is surrounded by high mountains. In recent years, with the continuous improvement of traffic conditions, most of villages in Taran Township have access to roads. Nilam Dumbo delivers mail 
One every two days. He has to drive across four mountains to reach his six villages. Jesse Sonam, 55, is a postal car driver in Sutter County, to the Sergi Prefecture. In the past 20 years, he has traveled between Gar and Sutter County. He has also witnessed how road conditions have improved during the past decade. Despite its harsh geography, Tibet has substantially improved the local postal service. The postal network has covered all towns and counties within the region. This is Holy Tibet. Holy Tibet will take you to visit the roof of the world. Holy Tibet is the window into the life of Tibet. You are welcome to enjoy Holy Tibet. A Tibetan family witnesses Tibet's great changes in 70 years. Xinhua reports that Yellow Jungle River, the longest plateau river in China, is one of the highest rivers in the world, runs through the city of Shigde in southwest China's Tibet autonomous region. People living on the north bank have to cross the Roaring River to reach the city's downtown area and beyond. For Song, 88, a villager from Donga Town, and three generations of his offspring have different versions of stories of crossing the river, but are witnesses of the great changes in Tibet. Recalling the bitter days of the past, Po Song said the children were taken as serves at a very young age when their baby teeth had just fallen out and they had to work for their masters. Kusum used to live a miserable life just like about one million serfs in old Tibet. Things began to change since the peaceful liberation of Tibet in 1951. One million serfs were liberated in 1959 when the feudal system was abolished through democratic reform. In 1956, Kusum, who was in his 20s, managed to cross the Yellow Zumba River on a boat made of bull hide and joined a Chinese People's Liberation Army stationed in Shigabe. He received basic education in the army for the first time in his life. He also committed himself to ethnic unity and rendered help towards local production. Pu Song said he did not feel tired even after working around the clock as the service was for the public rather than for feudal masters. He joined the Communist Party of China in 1958 and was awarded a CPC commemorative medal for his five decades of party membership. Pu Song's son, Dawa Tsiyun, inherited the tradition of river crossing on a bull height boat. At the age of eight, Dawa Tsiyun began to go to a primary school in a town on the other side of the river. Reaching school was not easy for a little Dawa Tsiyun, as he had to hold his boat and trek a dozen kilometers before getting to the ferry, while the fear of falling into the water always loomed large. He boarded at school and came home every three weeks. In the old Tibet, over 90% of Tibetans struggled for subsistence, and up to 95% were illiterate. Today, hunger and poverty is a thing of the past for people of all ethnic groups in Tibet, and a 15-year public funded education is offered across the region. The custom of riding boats across the Yellow Zumba River finally ended when a bridge was built in 2016 as part of the poverty eradication efforts in the village. The river is no longer a barrier. Now, I said that his 15-year-old daughter got to attend a junior high school in Jinan, capital of East China's Shandong province. Thanks to an interprovincial pairing up poverty alleviation initiative, the memories of starting life from scratch are etched in Puzzle's heart. Looking into the future, the younger generations of this family have higher expectations. Puzzle Mobile, Puzzle's grandson, plans to learn some knowledge about agricultural mechanization, which is burgeoning in their village and foray into the potato planting industry. Pusa Mobo pins more hope on his 10-year-old daughter, Pema Sidron, the fourth generation of this Tibetan family. With convenient access to compulsory education, Pema Sidron is enrolled in a primary school that is located in their own town. It takes her just a few minutes to reach school by school bus. You've been listening to Tibet Review of the Holy Tibet from China Tibet Radio and Television with me, Xiaoyu. Tibet witnesses decrease in desertification thanks to environmental programs. 
Fiji team reports that Luka City, a semi-arid region in the Tibet Autonomous Region, has been working on a desertification control program covering more than 3,200 hectares. Since 2005, the government has promoted the agriculture and animal husbandry sectors in this area, helping nearly 2,000 local farmers find jobs. According to statistics, Desertification in the region decreased by 92,000 hectares between 2004 and 2014, while certification dropped by 100,000 hectares. After 10 years' efforts, the sand has settled, greatly improving the local environment. According to Chang Xuexiang, an environmental expert at the Chinese Academy of Sciences, the effects of the sand control project has been good. Before the launch of the control project for the sandy area in 2005, the sand was blown everywhere by frequent winds in different seasons throughout the year. The wind speed could reach over 24 meters per second in summer. To prevent sandstorms from spreading to other parts of the region, residents and organizations planted trees and built grids to keep the sand in place. The average altitude of Lokia City is around 3,700 meters, which is too high an elevation for many species of plants and trees to survive. Environmentalists have to carefully select a hardy flora that can withstand the altitude and the environment, such as the mulberry tree. Chang said they choose plants which have better desertification control effects in the inland regions. The Qinghaiba Plateau, also known as the Rift of the World and the Water Tower of Asia, is an important guarantor of China's environmental security. With that, we wrap up this edition of the program. I'm Xiao Yue in Hefa. Thanks for listening. Until next week. Bye bye. <laughs> This is Holy Tibet. Embrace the blue sky, white clouds, and the great Mount Chumulama. To the vast grasslands, divine lakes, and the splendid of the Kotala Palace. Holy Tibet takes an exciting look into the lives of the Tibetans while showcasing the culture and landscapes of Tibet. This is Holy Tibet. Hello and welcome back to Holy Tibet from China Tibet Podcast. The station M Star in Hasa. And Damshun is a county in Hasa of Tibet Autonomous Region. Damshun means the selected pasture in the Tibetan language. Damshun is cold and dry in winter and cool and wet in summer with very variable weather and the average annual temperature is 1.3 Celsius degrees with only 62 frost free days. The land is frozen from the start of the November to the following March. And Namso is one of the great lakes of the Tibetan Plateau, and the Nanjing Tangula Mountains extends around the northwest of the country. Mount Nanjing Tangula is the highest peak in the region at 7,111 meters. We will celebrate the 100th anniversary of the founding of the Communist Party of China in the 70th anniversary of the peaceful liberation of Tibet. An Nemo country in Hasa has been developing traditional ethnic crafts such as Tibetan incense, Tibetan paper and wood carved items to increase the income of local farmers and herders. And Tibetan incense, Tibetan paper and wood carved items are known as the three kinds of unique products in Nemo. So Tourism of Holy Tibet is presenting you a feature program of Dem Xiong and Nemo. Hope you like it. We are very welcome your feedback through email at holy tibet program at one to three dot com. In this wonderland, there are fascinating holy mountains and lakes, primeval forests, rare plants and animals. Hospital people, unique forecasts, brilliant art and culture. 
It has long be known for natural splendor, culturalness, and historical charm. This place is different from any other tourist destination in the world. Is Tibet a colonized region located at southwest China? Do you want to make special trip there? All you need to do is to join us in tourism section of the Blue Tibet. Welcome back. The Nemo County of Haifa has been developing traditional ethnic crafts such as Tibetan incense, Tibetan paper, and wood carved items to increase the income of local farmers and herders. Uh, Tibetan incense, Tibetan paper, and wood carved items are known as the three kinds of unique products in Nemo. Currently, in the township of Pusu alone, there are more than a hundred of carvers and 490 people engaged in wood carving related processing and sales. In the flat season, they cave not only the traditional sculpture printing bars, but also tourism souvenirs. Tibetan paper has been widely used in Tibetan inhabited areas for more than 1,300 years. It has a few special characteristics, such as that it cannot be damaged by wounds. It can be kept for a long time, as soft and suitable for long-term uses and reading. A lot of Buddhist sutras collected in Bodala Palace, Chokang Temple, Sira Monastery, and other monasteries take use of Tibetan paper. For 1,000 years, it has been recording Tibetan history and witnessed its civilization process. Known as hometown of Tibetan incense and located in the north bank of the middle reaches of the Yalong Zambo River, Nemo County lies about 120 kilometers away from Sasa, capital city of southwestern China's Tibet Autonomous Region, with an average elevation of 4,000 meters. It's a characteristic plateau of small county integrating the development of agricultural, industry, and surveillance service. There are eight townships and 33 administrative villages under the jurisdiction of this county. Nemo, which means ear of wheat in Tibetan, has numerous good reputations such as hometown of Tibetan language, a region of Tibetan incense culture, and Tassas granary. It also enjoys great popularity in the markets of other cities with ancient and mysterious ethnic culture as well as agricultural and animal husbandry products. Tibetan incense usually refers to a common style of incense found in Tibet. And the incense is an important reputation of the Tibetan culture. Mr. Tenzin Chuta, a Tibetan incense in inheritor of intangible cultural heritage. Tibetan incense are made from herbs, roots, flowers, and are pressed into sticks. They are not wrapped around a bland stick like Indian or American incense are. What you get is the pure fragment of wounds, resins, and herbs in the incense. Most Tibetan incense is woody, so what you smell is generally either a dry wood or a spread wood. A dry wood may contain undertones of herbs or resins that are not especially sweet, and a sweet wood would be blended with resins, herbs, and plants that gave the wood more of a warm and sweet character. Yeah. Tibetan incense is handmade and usually from the herbs and rooms from the area where the incense makers are located. <laughs> Oh, no. 
paper has incredible durability and is easy to preserve and hardly get to autumn. In the past, the Tibetan paper was mainly used to print religion-related books. Nowadays, it's often used to make Tibetan paper notebooks, photo albums, so letters, and so on. This unique technology has been listed in the first batch of National Intangible Cultural Heritage directly in 2006. When we talk about the traditional products, Tibet is probably most famous for its herbal medicine. However, it's perhaps less well known for its paper making, a craft which in fact has over a thousand years of history. Since people in Tibet started making paper 1,300 years ago, it has been used to make printed currency, documents, sculptures, paintings, and calligraphy. And the Tibetan paper is made from the root of a personalized print, known as Rijang, which gives it some unique properties, long-lasting and resilient. It resists insects and does not disintegrate when submerged in winter. Gyeosan Dongji, a Tibetan paper maker. The process of making paper begins with the collection of Rijiao roots from the mountains where the plant grows. Before cutting and filling them to expose the inner form, the roots now need to be boiled for several hours and uh, mash it into a pulp. Once smooth, the craft person passes the pulp in a filter and leaves it to dry into sheets of paper. And Nemo County, which is one of the places with abundant handicraft industries in Tibet, has 10 items of intangible cultural shortages at state, regional, and municipal levels. Among the 10 items, Tibetan incense plays an important role in local people's lives. Tibetan incense is listed among national intangible cultural heritages and the most distinctive cultural symbols in Tibet. The history of Tibetan incense making can be traced back to 1,300 years ago. And its traditional making scheme has been passed down to today by Nemo people. And nowadays, Nemo County has been developing traditional ethnic crafts such as Tibetan incense to increase the income of local farmers and herders. Karo Village is located in Nemo County and being next to the National Highway number 318, the village boasts beautiful idyllic scenery and unique cultural landscapes. One thing worth mentioning is an old walnut grove in which the highest walnut trees is over 1,300 years ago, and trees always linger among the walnut trees, forgetting to return. Mr. Dawa Samdian, the director of cultural and tourism office of Nemo County. Taking advantage of old bond growth that the family owns and intangible cultural heritage works, a folk culture experience park has been built in 
the village, which encourages local poor households to encourage and tourism industry and has helped 13 households getting jobs and increasing income. At the Colonel's Folk Cultural Exhibition Center, there are Tibetan incenses, Tibetan paper, and put some sculptures on display. Besides, encounters of intangible cultural heritage show traditional Tibetan paper making and Tibetan incense making techniques at the center. So tourists could also experience making Tibetan paper and incense, which is a good chance to know more about the traditional Tibetan culture. <laughs>
plants and animals. Hospital people, unique fur custom, brilliant art and culture. It has long been known for natural splendor, cultural richness, and historical charm. This place is different from any other tourist destination in the world. It's Tibet Autonomous Region, located at Southwest China. Do you want to make a special trip here? All you need to do is to join us in tourist section of Only Tibet. Welcome back, and Dumshou is a county in the house of Tibet Autonomous Region. Dumshou means the selected pasture in the Tibetan language. Dumshou is cold and dry in winter and cool and wet in summer with very variable weather. And the average annual temperature is 1.3 Celsius degrees with only 62 frost free days. The land is frozen from the start of the November to the following March. And Namso is one of the great lakes of the Tibetan Plateau. And Namso or Lake Lam is a mountain lake on the border between Gamsung County of Hasa, approximately 112 kilometers from Hasa. And Namso was born in the Paleogene age as a result of Himalayan tectonic plate movements. The lake lies at an elevation of 4,700 meters, and this salt lake is the largest lake in the Tibet Autonomous Region. Mr. Bama Dorje, a local herdsman of Damshung County. Namso has five uninhabited islands of a reasonable size. In addition to one or two rocky outcrops, the islands have been used for spiritual retreat by pilgrims who work over the lake's frozen surface in the end of winter, carrying their food with them, and they spend the summer there unable to return to the shore again until the winter free the following winter. The largest of the islands is in the northwest corner of the lake and is about 2,100 miles and 800 meters wide, rising to just over 100 meters in the middle. And its closest point is about 3.1 kilometers from the shore. The weather at Namco is subject to a drop, sudden change, and snowstorms are very common across the Nanjing Tango Range. In this wonderland, there are fascinating holy mountains and lakes, primeval forests, rare plants and animals, hospital people, unique fur custom, brilliant art and culture. It has long been known for natural splendor, cultural richness, and historical charm. This place is different from any other tourist destination in the world. It's Tibet Autonomous Region, located at Southwest China. Do you want to make a special trip there? All you need to do is to join us in tourism section of Holy Tibet. Yanqing Tanglai is a mountain ridge in the eastern part of the Trans Himalayas. Bounded by the Tibetan highland on the south, the Yanqing Tanglai separates the basin of the Zhangbo River in the south from the basin of the Nokcho River and Lake Namco in the north. It's about 600 kilometers long and is composed of Paleozoic and the Mesozoic sandstones shores and the limestones, Cretaceous volcanic rocks, and young granite. The range forms an almost uninterrupted chain of snow-covered mountains with a relatively even crust. The maximum elevation is 7,000 meters and passes line about 5,000 meters. 
The slopes are rocky and covered with pearls. High mountain slabs and sandy deserts are well developed on the lower southern slopes, and cold desert landscapes prevail on the northern slopes. Mr. Bama Dorje, a local herdsman of Dongshun County. Nanjing Tangha is the name given both to a 700 mile long mountain range of northern Tibet and to the protector deity associated with it, who was born on the oath by Guru Padma Sambhava when Buddhism was first established in Tibet. The Nanjing Tangha mountains are a 700 km long mountain range located in the Tibet Autonomous Region. The southern side of the Nanjing Tangla Mountains is precipitous and forced by around 2,000 meters, while the northern side is fairly level and descends about 1,000 meters. The west Nanjing Tangla lies to the southeast of Namtia. The range trends to the northeast and forms part of the northern watershed of the Yolongzangbo River. The northwestern section is joined by the Hasa River and the largest tributary of the Yalongzang Bar. Eastern Nanjing Tangla, located in Nacho Prefecture, Chamdo and Nancho Prefecture, marks the water divided between the Yalongzang Bar to the south and the Nacho River to the north. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,